Greetings Deckers, Liam here. Valve has put up a beta version of SteamOS 3.4 for the Steam Deck and I'm not exaggerating here when I say that this is probably one of the biggest updates to the Steam Deck since release, so let's go ahead and dive in. First up, if you wish to try it out, you need to hit the Steam button, go into Settings and then into System. In the System Update Channel drop-down box, select Preview and let it restart an update. However, if you want a solid experience, stick to Stable as Here Be Dragons. As for what's new, there is a lot, seriously, there is so much to this that actually properly covering everything would be quite difficult and a very long video. As usual, I'll be giving you some highlights. Firstly, KDE Plasma, the desktop mode, has jumped multiple new versions. So we're now on Plasma 5.26. One of the additions here is the new Plasma Overview mode, giving you a way to see all windows and applications across different desktops that you have set up. It's pretty slick and it really does help you manage lots of open applications and windows. So say you're working away in your fancy text editor or a browser, but you need to easily find another open window. You can go to the top left of the screen and there is your overview. It shows you everything that's open and it also allows you to search for open applications here as well. Next is accent colors. In the plasma settings, you can go into the colors menu and set whatever interface accent color that you want. Hit apply and then it changes it across the desktop instantly. There's quite a few places this changes the coloring like folder icons and highlighted items. It's a pretty sweet bit of customization and you can even have your accent color taken from your background image to match as well. The Discover software store also now has a responsive user interface that will adjust to different screen and window sizes, making it more useful. While having many elements of the design tweaked and changed, and it should be a lot more stable too. One of the most useful changes is when you actually go into an application in Discover, it will show the version info directly below the images at the top instead of burying it all down at the bottom. The panel at the bottom can now be made to float as well. In the right click edit menu, go into more options and then the floating panel option at the bottom, giving it a nice gap all around the edges and it looks pretty cool. But when you actually maximize that application window, it automatically fills in to make it look right. And then when you pull it back to a window, it has a gap again. Pretty sleek. A key point of all the desktop plasma updates is tons of customization and making it more stable than ever. There are supposed to be new touchscreen gestures as well, and you can change them in the workspaces section of the settings, but as of yet, I haven't actually been able to get them to work. There's probably some more tweaks it needs for the Steam Deck touchscreen. There's lots more to desktop mode, but that's just some fun quick highlights. Let's talk more about the Steam side now. There's a fair bit here, and it's all pretty exciting. First up, the performance overlay was upgraded and level 2 will now sit along the top of your screen as you're seeing in Spider-Man Remastered here. So instead of it going all the way down the left hand side of your screen, it just fills a nice little gap at the top. This is especially good for games that have black bars above and below because it actually fills that black gap at the top so it would take no space over the actual game. There's also a new option to allow screen tearing in the performance menu, which should reduce some input lag, but as the name suggests, you will see some screen tearing. So you get a bit of a trade-off on the screen tearing, but you get better input, so it might be better for highly competitive games. Storage got some upgrades as well, like the trim option enabled for the internal drive now, as well as external drives, which should help improve the right performance. They say it's been made safe for SD cards and Steam itself will periodically trim devices and in the settings system advanced section there's an option where you can run it right away. External drive support got better with this release as well. You now have an option to eject the drive with Valve quite amusingly noting it does not physically eject it because no doubt if they didn't put that there someone will have thought that they meant it will fire out at you if they didn't make a note of that. 
So with this option, it allows you to properly safely remove drives with no extra scripts needed. Although in my testing, the option only currently appears on the micro SD card, not additional external drives. Hopefully they will actually add that in properly for all external drives. Even better though, is that if you format an external drive to EXT4, Steam will now automatically mount it and make it available in Steam. No more special scripts are needed to be downloaded and run for external drives using that EXT format. However, I did still need to manually add my external drive formatted with EXT4 in desktop mode Steam as a Steam library first. In this case, my JSOX M2 SSD dock before it would actually show up as a library in gaming mode. However, apart from that, I didn't need to do anything extra now. It shows up just fine even after rebooting so their new auto mounting system with no other changes does work. This is a huge win and it makes it much easier to plug in more drives to the Steam Deck as long as they are correctly formatted and set up in Steam as a library. There's plenty more like various fixes to input including the timing of virtual key presses with the on-screen keyboard being improved for various apps like Street Fighter V and the EA app. They also re-enabled the built-in gamepad driver when Steam is not running in desktop mode so you can actually use it properly. And you will also find various audio improvements. There is a firmware update for the official docking station to fix a problem with HDMI 2.0 displays not being detected during wake or boot. And that was annoying me quite a lot. GPU clock settings sometimes wouldn't stick if set manually. That's been fixed. A performance issue that could cause 100 millisecond hitches during gameplay if the adaptive backlight was enabled has been solved. And some people noted recently sporadic fan behavior on some models that should also be fixed. There is so much here is amazing. So much behind the scenes that powers the Steam Deck has been upgraded with this beta version. As always, the links will be in the description. Be sure to let me know in the comments what you think. And I will see you all next time.